Hey guys, this is Bill Chris back in the cave. And today I like to talk about buck sweep if and then, okay? You know, we all have a couple plays, I hope, maybe not, uh, I do. A couple plays a year you lay in bed and start the ceiling and think about. And we had a situation this year where we called in a play buck sweep, which is our bread and butter play. I tell the O-line all the time, hey, this play can't be stopped. This is our play. We run this play. We're expecting dominance. And we got a situation where we're playing a team that's familiar with us. It's a rivalry team. We've run over them for years. And uh, we had a big fourth and three or four. Buck sweep call went in. Getting ready for the next play on first down. And our buck sweep got stopped. And it was one of those scenarios where it was a big play. Put us in a hole for the game. And, uh, you know, those guys knew us. They probably knew the play was coming. Shouldn't matter. And, you know, and they got up. They stopped the play. They got the ball. Rawr! You know, they're all pumped up, and there was a coach who's standing there trying not to look stupid and react. You know, he's, it was an awkward situation. It was one that was unfamiliar, and I don't like being in. And then in the offseason now, I'm going back and looking at a buck sweep. So what what happened and, and what how can we fix it is the question, and what do we do with situations? Well, when I started looking at buck sweeps, and other people run it, I grew up in Buck Sweep. We've been running it for years. We've had it stopped occasionally here and there, but it's always a play. But I think there's a couple factors that come together that will ruin a Buck Sweep. First of all, everything on the internet I saw in every playbook, for the most part, had a wing in some way, shape, or form down blocking on an end. There was one where they had like a sniffer looping out and around and uh, basically scooping out and taking on an end. But... I looked at that, and that was kind of our problem on that play. We had a mismatch. We had a wing-type player on an end. Now, let's be realistic here, okay? This might work on paper. This marker doesn't have a bench press. This marker doesn't have motivation. And this marker on a line doesn't mean that guy's blocked. And anymore in today's day of football, we're more passing. Kids are more worried about getting their heads in places. If you have a wing, uh, they're not... Blocking is not their strong suit, okay? That's not what they're there for. They don't spend a lot of time at it. And generally, physically, a wing is a mismatch against an end. A five, a seven, or a nine, physically, in most cases, is going to be a beast. A wing is going to be a fast kid that can catch a football, who doesn't spend a lot of time blocking, okay? This kid's going to have a lot of motivation to get in the backfield and make a big play and get up and cheer and stop us, whereas... This guy, I don't know, run blocking. I'm, I'm going to say it. I mean, if you offensive line has all the consequences of a run. If a, if a team gets stuffed on a rundown, you'll hear in the sidelines, come on, line block. Or you never hear, come on, wing block. Come on, back block. Come on, line block. Now, the running back breaks an 80-yard touchdown run. He's a great running back. You know, that's something linemen live with. So consequences for him are slim. You got a guy that has to make a play, wants to make a play. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to make a play. You know, he's a big, strong guy, and they're going to blame the line. You know, we're long yard. Maybe we'll throw now. So, yeah, I said it. You know, it's, but it's the truth. It's the reality. Now, it's the same thing. Like, I would go the other way. I'm not just picking on wings. You know, it's the same asking him to block probably one of the best defenders. It's the same as asking your tackle to go on a go route versus their best corner. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. So, I don't know why we're drawing it up over and over again. In playbooks, having a wing take on an end. So, there's the different ways I saw it. Okay, we have a wing next to a tap, you know, outside in a wing position. Tight end scoops inside the end, goes to the backer. The next inside backer tackles down, taking on his guy here. And the wing's going out and logging this stud. Okay, we have one where the tackle's inside tight end, the wing comes down, tight end goes to the backer. Okay, we get the ball out around. Of course, you know, buck sweep, we pull both guards and all that, backfield action. We have, you know, you can do it out of jet, you can do it on motion, far side wing, two back backfield. But we're worried about the edge of buck sweep here because that's where we're getting beat. Okay, probably the best one I saw was down here in the corner where you have a sniffer inside the tackle. The tight end still going down to a linebacker, and you got the sniffer coming out and getting head on the edge player. Don't even love that. Even though Sniffer's probably more of a valid player, he's a skilled blocker for the most point. He's one of your best blockers. Definitely your best blocker in the backfield. He's an H-back, uh, fullback type player. Um, 
that one I can live with okay but might not be my best option so what's killing us is you got a kid that's blocking is not in his wheelhouse of his favorite things to do not at the top of his skill list taking on a guy whose skill list is destroying blockers and holding edges if he and I tell our guys even when we do have a required down block that we're not asking you to do anything hard but if you don't do it the play doesn't work you could have and you know it's happened I you know you've had Five offensive linemen blow up five defenders, and we gain one yard. Um, and this is one of those plays where that can happen. So this wing, okay, he needs – we need to put him someplace where he's more comfortable, and we need to get somebody out there that's a better physical matchup for an end type player. So there's different kind of ways I, I would do it. I to draw up a base – Wing T real quick. If I have the tight end here and I have a wing, you got a split, quarterback. We got something like that. And I have an end outside and a tackle. That's a scenario now where we're forced to have somebody take care of this end. In this scenario, I'm pretty sure I would use my guard. Um, the guard don't in the buck sweep doesn't always, it's an adjustment we have built in. For situations and anymore, I think it should, probably should be the standard rule. So, you know, I can have a double team to a backer here. Okay, now I don't need in a traditional. Whoop, we got a problem here. Okay, we're gonna we got a, a guy in the A gap here. He'd be a three tech. Okay, excuse me. We can still go down the backer, okay? We can take care of this three tech. I would have my wing go out the corner. There's a better physical matchup. Guys, let's go. Now I would have my guard kick out or log the end, okay? We cannot have this end. We cannot let this end right here. If that end gets behind that tackle and into the box, Buck sweeps dead. And that's what happened on our play. I was talking about it keeps me up at night. They had a defensive player get in here. It kind of jammed everybody up, slowed everything down, bounced things wider, and the safety came up and cleaned stuff up short of the stick. So we need to prevent this guy from getting there. So to me, it makes sense to have the guard. And it works no matter how they line up. Okay, If we have, like originally mistake drive, we have a defensive tackle here. Linebacker there, we got a double team the backer. We still got a log or a kick out. And then the backside backer is going to read if we log. Okay. If we log, we're going to have the backside wrap around here at force. We're looking inside for chase backer. If we kick out, because he boxes, we'll kick him out and we'll wrap inside like traditional power and go to. The chase back or force so and then of course your back is following that trail guard off his hip so he's going inside or outside so no matter what you're doing i'd either have a tight end in position if you got to detach at the tight end come down because the tight end is more of a physical matchup than a uh, wing and usually physically you know my, our tight ends usually play defensive end and uh that's a better matchup than a wing on a stud. Not that a wing's not a stud, but it's a different type of stud. So um, I, I would either have the guard do it, or depending on the formation where he lines that guy, have the tight end down block it and have the wing go to the secondary and alleviate that problem. I wouldn't even have tag. We have tags where we can, we can, if there's certain situations where you can't get out there, I would double team. I wouldn't leave the wing alone. Uh, there's a couple alignments. If we have a we have a guy head up on the tackle and we have a tight end in a wing, okay, I would have them double team. I would take that and work the backer and then have the guard wrap around the force over still leaving I'm not leaving the wing alone and I'm leaving the solo block, the crucial block on one of my best blockers right here who's trained to block team to drive block and I'll take my chances with him winning that war over a wing win the war versus my end so there it is a couple ways to uh 
maybe tune up, modernize your buck sweep. You know, I'm sorry, uh, you know, the traditional buck sweep drawing up in many playbooks is, is no longer sitting well with me. I've been running it my whole life and uh, running it the way it's supposed to be run, you know, and uh, anymore, I, I, I don't think leaving the wing one-on-one -on -one versus an end is a, is a great option. I think there's better ways to do it. So I'd look at that, not maybe as an adjustment, but going in, coming off the bus, first play, having that guard take care of that edge player or having a double team with the tight end in the wing. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you hope you tune up your buck sweep. If you know of a better way, feel free to let me know because I'm still scratching my head because it's a play that shouldn't be stopped. And we got stopped and I'm looking at you, wing. Okay, so take care. Thanks for watching.